Hello once again. This is Marion Lurie from Melville United Church. I am the minister there. And I am presenting today for you, offering a Good Friday service. This service is based on a Good Friday service written by Gary Patterson and Carrie Waylander, found in a book called Courage for Hallelujahs. I express my appreciation to them. And we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the indigenous peoples with whom Treaty 4, also known as the Haldeman Tract, was signed and the territory wherein our church resides and are acknowledging our responsibilities as treaty members. This is an important act that we do. So we gather in community. Even though we cannot be together physically, we share in the community of faith through things like this printed or videoed worship. This service today is prepared for Good Friday. This day was one of the saddest days, and it's one of the saddest days in our church calendar, because today we mark the death of Jesus, one who came to model and teach us about God's love. His message was a threat to the religious and civil authorities of his day, so they plotted to shut him up. To destroy him and his message. We know that didn't work. We know that his message lived on, but we also know that people are still being crucified in many ways in our day and age. And so we lament and we grieve and we remember how the world tried to snuff out love. We mark an occasion of humanity at its worst. A warning before we begin, this short service is a solemn one. Good Friday can be a difficult time for many of us. There is no joy in execution, especially of one who lived only by love. But I invite you to stay the course to the end if you can, because we cannot truly experience the joy and new life of Easter morning without having first gone through this time of pain and death. Also, please note, we will end in silence. I'm going to light the candle. And I light the candle in the name of God who creates life, in the name of the Christ presence who loves life, and in the name of the Spirit, who is the fire of life. I invite you into this time of worship, a time for recognizing and acknowledging the still small voice within, a time to listen and reflect on issues of the day, time to find calm and hope and inspiration, and today a time to grieve and remember. Come, let us worship together. Our first scripture is from Matthew 27 verses 15 to 23. Now on the occasion of the festival, the governor was accustomed to release one prisoner, whomever the crowd would designate. At the time they were holding a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate asked him, asked them, which one do you wish me to release for you? Barabbas? or Jesus, the so-called Messiah. Pilate knew, of course, that it was jealousy that had, that it was the reason they had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was still presiding on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. I had a dream about him last night that's been troubling me all day. But the chief priests and elders convinced the crowds that they should ask for Barabbas and have Jesus put to death. So when the governor asked them, which one do you wish me to redeem for you? They cried, Barabbas. Pilate said to them then, what am I to do with Jesus, the so-called Messiah? Crucify him, they all said. Why, what crime has he committed? Pilate asked. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him.
The cross symbolizes human cruelty and suffering, an oppressive political regime, and all those who have, are deemed expendable by those in power. It represents Jesus' death. Matthew 27, 24 to 26. Pilate finally realized he was getting nowhere with this. In fact, a riot was breaking out. Pilate called for water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, declaring as he did so, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. The whole crowd said in reply, Let his blood be on us and our children. At that, Pilate released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus whipped with a cat of nine tails, then handed him over to be crucified. Water symbolizes life and death. The waters of birth contrasted with the water that flowed from Jesus' side when it was pierced. Water represents our tears and our sorrows. It represents our thirst for mercy, healing, and for God's presence. It represents Jesus washing the feet of his followers. And it represents the vulnerability of our earth and our human condition in that we need to have clean, safe water to survive. Oh God, we call, oh God, we call, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn for you. Matthew 27, 27 to 31. The governor's soldiers took Jesus inside the praetorium and assembled the whole cohort, cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and wrapped him in a scarlet military cloak. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they pressed it onto his head and stuck a reed into his right hand. Then they began to mock Jesus by dropping to their knees saying, All hail, King of the Jews! They also spat at him. Afterward, they took hold of the reed and struck Jesus on the head. Finally, when they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to be crucified. The Crown of Thorns a symbol of mockery and humiliation, a warning from those in power to those deemed powerless, a reminder of all those who are imprisoned and tortured. Oh God, we call, oh God, we call, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn for you. Matthew 27, Selected Verses On their way out they met a Cyrenian named Simon, whom they pressed into service to carry the cross. Upon arriving at the site called Golgotha, which means skull place. They gave Jesus a drink of wine mixed with a narcotic herb, which Jesus tasted but refused to drink. Once they had nailed Jesus to the cross, they divided 
these clothes among them by rolling dice. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. Above his head they put the charge against him in writing, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two robbers were cru crucified along with Jesus, one at his right and one at his left. At noon, a darkness fell over the whole land until about three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This made some of the bystanders who heard it remark, he's calling on Elijah. One of them hurried off and got a sponge. He soaked the sponge in cheap wine and sticking it on a reed, tried to make Jesus drink. The others said, leave him alone. Let's see whether Elijah comes to his rescue. Once again, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Then he gave up his spirit. Suddenly the curtain in front of the Holy of Holies was ripped in half from top to bottom. The earth quaked, boulders were split. The centurion and his cohort who were standing guard over Jesus' body were terror stricken at seeing the earthquake and all that was happening and said clearly this was God's own. A group of women were present looking on from a distance. These were the same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee to minister to him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. A black cloth, a symbol of our human vulnerability a reminder of how our own lives are connected to those who weave the cloth, a symbol of mourning, a reminder of the temple veil tearing in two, a reminder of tearing one's own clothing as a sign of grief. Oh God, we call O oh God, we call, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn for you. Matthew 27, 57 to 61. When evening fell, a wealthy man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had become a disciple of Jesus, came to request the body of Jesus. Pilate issued an order for its release. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in fresh linen and laid it in his own tomb, which had been hewn out of rock. Then Joseph rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and went away. But Mary of Magdala and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. A rock, a symbol of our own entombment, a reminder of all that keeps us weighed down, a symbol of death and closed doors, a reminder of the women asking, who will roll away the stone? Oh God, we call, oh God, we call, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn, from deep inside we yearn for you. Nail. The nails represent our capacity to use what we have and what we know to either build up and bring together or to tear down and wound and cause death.
Let us pray. Dear God, as we come together on this day, the way that Jesus met, to remember the way that Jesus met his death, we present the nails of our lives. Nails are tools that can be used to bind together, to build strong structures of support, to be the small bits that make up all the to make all the difference to how the whole is held together. But we know we have not always used our knowledge and skills to build up and contribute to the world becoming a better and more loving place. We know that many have used the nails of power, privilege, and wealth to hold others down, to imprison them both physically and emotionally. We know that when we keep silent about injustice and wrongdoing, we are hammering those nails deeper. Wake us up, God of justice. Wake us up to the need and the ways that so many are crucified every day. Crucified on the cross of injustice, abuse, inequality, oppression, and cruelty. We pray today for all of the innocent ones who are sacrificed and crucified at the hands of oppressors and warlords and dictators. We pray today for all those who lack the basic tools to provide for their families. We pray today for all those who hoard the tools and the bounty of their harvests for the few who can afford to buy them. And we pray today for ourselves as we offer up the nails of our lives, our grief, our selfishness, our arrogance, our narrow-mindedness, our privilege. May we find and use the nails of mercy, of compassion, of justice, of understanding and of love, that we may help to build a better world for all your children. And we offer these in all of our prayers. In the name of the Crucified One, Jesus the Christ, as we pray together the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it comes Causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? 
Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? As we extinguish the flame, we acknowledge the pain and sorrow we have experienced. The pain and sorrow we have caused. We acknowledge our deep yearning for healing, wholeness, and new life. And we remember the death of the one we call Jesus of Nazareth.